Hi, welcome back. We're going to start our discussion of financial statements by starting with the income statement. And I've loaded up Southwest Airlines income statement here. I think you can see it pretty well, but if you prefer to download it, I'll put the link below or you can go to southwestairlines.com, go to their investor relations section and download it yourself. Uh, and again, I've chosen Southwest Airlines because I really like the way they lay out the information, not necessarily because they're the most interesting in terms of income statement, but they just do a good job of summarizing the information. And, and that's where I really want to start. I want to just take a nice high-level view of the income statement, show how this information is really nicely summarized so that you can pick off the relevant figures, and then in the next video, we'll go a little bit deeper and do some analysis. But for, for starters, I just want to show you the layout of the income statement and, and how to pull out some really relevant information. And if that's all you need, there's no, there's no need to go deeper into the income statement. A lot of times when, when investors or people are looking at income statements, they go right to the information they're looking for. So let me start out just by uh, showing you the length of the document. So let me see if I can find my scroll here. There it is. And just show you, first of all, that it's really not a long document at all. So it's less than one page, so I'm going to scroll all the way down. And you can see it doesn't even make it to the bottom of the page. And if you go back up here, you can see that it's, uh, it's pretty concise. And that's because this is a summary of everything that happened it, you know, within the airline's finances within, within the time period that's being reported. There's an awful lot of detail behind here uh, that is not presented, but the, the, the idea of the income statement is that the airline is summary, summarizing the results for their investors. Uh, let me go up here and just start with the title. So one thing that may mislead you is income statements generally don't have the title of income statement. They're called statement of operations. If you see a link somewhere, a lot of times the link will be called income statement, and then when you pull it up, it won't actually have that title. So don't let that throw you. And then the other thing I wanted to just mention is this term income. So in this document, you're going to see the term income. But when you hear income or profits or earnings, it generally means the same thing. So don't let that throw you if sometimes you hear income and profits and you think, well, those are two different things. Uh, or earnings. Earnings tends to be the the net net bottom line, but generally when you hear these three terms, or, or they're whoever's talking about that is talking about the the same thing. So now let me go down and just point out the the sections, the summary sections in this document, and you'll see that there are three summaries of income being presented here. The first one is operating income. And if that's all we were interested, we could very quickly go and see that in the in this quarter, which happens to be the fourth quarter of 2012, Southwest Airlines earned $91 million of operating income. And I know it's millions because they'll give you the units up here. So in the fourth quarter of 2012, Southwest earned operating income. We'll go back and show what went into that calculation, but that's uh, that's the most important thing in terms of the operating uh, results for this quarter is that income line. So you could go right there. Uh, let's go down and show you two other summary items. We have income before taxes. And in this case, it was $125 million. And then finally, net income, which is often, often, often called the earnings, which is $78 million. So we're going to go back and, and talk a little bit about what went into these calculations. But those are the sort of bottom line figures that are in the income statement. If you were looking for just the high level information on Southwest Airlines performance for a particular quarter, those are the three things you could pull off very quickly. And you could really ignore the, the, the rest if you didn't want to know the details of what, what drove those results. Let's go back up top. And so I've shown you what's in the in the sort of vertical section. Let me just point out what how this information is laid out uh, horizontally. So I, I noted that this this quarter here was the fourth quarter of 2012. 
the the way these are laid out now usually you will see quarterly information but sometimes it's annualized so you just have to pay attention to the document and often if you go online to Google Finance or Yahoo Finance these are interactive documents so you might choose quarterly information or annual information so just make sure you you know what you're looking at the other thing to take note of is the way this is laid out, it's it's sequentially with the oldest quarter on the left and the newest on the right. So you have the fourth quarter of 2012, then the first quarter of 2013, the second quarter of 2013, and then the most recent quarter, September of 2013. Now, sometimes you will see it laid out in the opposite direction. So sometimes you'll see the most recent quarter on the left-hand side here next to the row headings and sometimes the most recent quarter is over here. So you just have to pay attention, particularly if you're comparing across airlines or across documents, that you're not mixing the, the periods. Uh, I, I often do that because I like looking at this column here because I can line up the row headings better, but um, I, I, I often forget that really what I want to see are the most recent quarter uh, column over here. So just pay attention to that. Okay. Now that we've seen the general layout of the document, let's go a little bit deeper into uh, what is making up these uh, these income lines. So for operating income, uh, ninety-one million dollars. Let's see what what uh, went into that. Well, operating income, or you know, in general, income or profits are the result of revenue and costs, right? So an airline or a company takes in a certain amount of revenue, they subtract out their costs, and whatever's left is their profit. Well, for Southwest, their income, so operating income, the, the, the revenue they brought in from operating the airline, from flying flights and flying customers from point A to point B, in this quarter was a total of 4.173 billion dollars so the revenue for that quarter is 4.173 billion then the cost of producing that so the the cost of operating the airline in that same quarter is summarized here for you in operating expenses 4.082 so to get the net or excuse me the operating income for this period you simply take the revenue you subtract out your cost and the difference is 91 million dollars okay so that's how they come up with the operating income we'll come back a little bit and talk about some of these items but for now let's just stay at a high level then we go down to the other expenses and income lines. And this information is sort of sort of grouped together, expenses and income. And the main difference between these expenses and income and the ones above are it's everything that didn't have to do with directly operating the airline. And we'll see later why this is separated out because a lot of times when investors want to know how well the airline is performing, they're not so interested in the in the non-operating expenses and revenue uh, they just want to see how the airline did from operating the airline so down here you'll have things like interest interest expense uh, things like what the airline has to pay on borrowed money uh, in some cases interest they receive uh, for having money in the bank we'll talk a little about this in the in the next uh, video but this is a summary section of all the other expenses and income that the airline has to incur during the quarter that don't really have to do with operating the airline. In this case, they net out to a negative 34 million. So that means there was other income of 34 million. And you just have to be careful here. So the income is uh, presented in in the parens here so what you really need to do here is you're you're subtracting out other expenses or income so it's 91 million minus this negative 34 so minus minus 34 is really plus 34 so 91 plus 34 is a net pre-tax income of 125 so that's how you get to that level and then the airline sets aside some money for Oh, let me see if I can find my scroller here again. Yeah, uh, sets aside some money to pay taxes, and they are going to put aside forty-seven million dollars to pay taxes. So from their 
pre-tax income, they subtract out their, their provision for taxes, and 125 minus 47 gives them net income for this quarter of $78 million. Okay, so that's how that they get to their bottom line. That's their earnings for the quarter. And that's that's often what you'll hear reported in financial media is, you know, if you hear that uh, they, if the financial media says Southwest Airlines earned $78 million in the quarter, that's what they're talking about, net income. There's one more calculation here. So to get down to earnings per share, so let me change my, so the um, often investors are interested in not just this total number, but what that means in terms of, of uh, income per share. So we go down and we look at the number of shares outstanding, and don't worry about the difference between diluted and basic. We'll just take our 736 million outstanding shares and divide that into net income. So 78 million divided by 736 million equals 11 cents, so our earnings per share, and they don't call it here earnings per share, but that's how it's usually, usually um, reported, is Southwest earned 11 cents per share in this quarter. And then that information is, is repeated, or, you know, actually this is, um, you know, each successive quarter, this calculation is done and added to the last. But you can see as you look across the column, the way it's summarized, you can compare these different quarters and the different uh, income levels and the different earning per share for the quarters. Now, I will caution you right away, though, don't, don't be too quick to conclude that this most recent quarter is necessarily better than the other quarters just because the net income is high. In this case, I think it is. But the airline business is so seasonal that you would expect some quarters to do better than other quarters just because of the nature of the business. Some quarters tend to be better quarters than others. So uh, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit. But be careful that you don't you know, look at this trend and say that Southwest is doing so much better. It would be really nice if we had this uh, fourth, or what is this, the third quarter for 2012 over here so we could look at the year-over-year -year comparison, but that's okay. That's uh, something we could look at uh, in other places. So I'm going to stop here for now. That's the high-level view of what's presented in the document. In the next section, in the next video, I want to show you how to calculate the margins, which you hear quoted a lot, and then we'll go into some of the different lines that make up these, uh, these incomes.